Is a cheap Baofeng transceiver like this useful in emergencies? Keep watching and find out. You sometimes see questions on social media along the lines of I've got this Baofeng transceiver, how do I use it? Someone normally replies and says Yes you can, but you need a ham licence. Then there's often another reply saying that In an emergency, it doesn't really matter and you could use it anyway. After all, some people say they've got these transceivers just for use in emergency. The better question that often isn't asked is, is it useful at all in an emergency? The answer is that it depends. If you live on a farm or large property and are going to be using these transceivers to talk between others in your family, then yes, it could be useful. But what if you wanted to use one of these to call for help? The short answer is no, it's going to be useless. Especially if you don't have any experience. It's not simple like a mobile phone where you can just dial up numbers, you'll be able to get through. Using a transceiver is a lot more complicated and the chances of success are much less. Especially if you don't have previous experience in using this type of gear. Having a ham licence will help a bit, but you still need some experience. Why are these useless when calling for help? The first thing is most of these cover a VHF segment and a UHF segment. Thousands, if not tens of thousands, of possible channels. The chance of one of them being listened into by someone fairly close by is very, very small. You need to understand a bit about frequencies, bands, different radio services, all that sort of thing. Now let's supposing that you were tuning across, maybe you learnt how to use the scan function and you did hear a conversation going on. If the conversation is on a repeater, there might be people talking, you trying to interrupt them, but you won't necessarily get through. That's because, amongst other things, repeaters have an output frequency where you hear the signal from them and an input frequency where you need to transmit. If you haven't set your transceiver up for both those frequencies at the right time, whether you're receiving or transmitting, then you won't be able to get through. What's a repeater, you might ask? That's a transmitter and receiver on a high hill that can retransmit weak signals such as received from handheld transceivers like this. Depending on where you are, you might have none, a few, or many repeaters within range of your handheld transceiver. Therefore, you can't rely on them for emergency communication. But that's not everything. Even if you've set your frequencies up right, you might still not be able to get into a repeater. One reason for that is that a lot of repeaters require a thing called subtones. That's another separate setting you need to master inside your transceiver. If your signal has a subtone and is within range of the repeater, then you've got a fair chance of getting into it. But even if you're on the right frequency and you've got no subtone or the wrong subtone, then you won't be able to get into it, no matter how close you are. A subtone is a low frequency tone, a bit lower than the voice spectrum, that's used to activate a repeater transmitter when an incoming signal is transmitting that particular tone. That's fitted on a lot of repeaters to lessen interference. Then there are cases where you can hear the repeater, you're on the right frequency, transmit and receive, and your subtone is set up right. Still, you're not guaranteed of getting through. That's because the signal from the repeater comes from a bigger antenna and a more powerful transmitter than what you're using with this handheld with a few watts and a small antenna. You may hear the repeater very well, but it may not hear you. The same goes for simplex, where you're hearing people directly without via a repeater. The range, if anything, will be less than the repeater, unless the other station is in a very good location. If you want to call for help with a handheld like this, the chances of you getting a response are very, very slim. So many things have to be right to have successful communication. If you're the type who has bought one of these thinking it would be okay in emergencies, then you're almost certainly misguided. It helps if you learn a bit about them, including getting an amateur licence, which will legally let you transmit, but that is not the be-all and end-all. You still need to get practical experience and knowledge before you can successfully operate a handheld transceiver like this. And even if you do, your location and antenna may not be adequate to maintain communication. 
Then there's the other thing. These will use rechargeable batteries. If you haven't charged up your battery, then no amount of knowledge will help you. You'll still be without power and not be able to transmit or receive. To sum up, buying one of these transceivers in the hope that you can call for help in an emergency is almost certainly mistaken. There's so many reasons why it won't work and the chance of getting a reply to your call will be very small, whether it be the wrong frequency, an incorrect frequency offset if you're using an amateur repeater, a no or wrong subtone, or plain flat batteries. All these things can mean that you're not heard. On the other hand, provided everyone who uses the transceiver is appropriately licensed, then they can be okay for short range communication within your property or farm, and maybe a little bit beyond. If you're seriously into emergency communication, then you're better off to set up with something that's higher power, with a better antenna, and a better power source that can keep your transceiver going for several hours. Then you'll have a good communications capability that doesn't rely on repeaters, which could be down at the time when you may need them.